Grover Chadwick was devoted to his own family, but the ruthless Manhua author didn't hesitate to kill him. Kimberly felt sorry for the character. She loved him and wished with all her heart that his story would end well. Unable to contain her emotions, Kimberly wrote her first ever angry comment. The next day, without expecting it, Kimberly woke up in the body of the main character of her favorite Manhua. Her name was now Olivia Swan, and she was an eight-year-old girl. This is definitely the author's doing. He's clearly on fire after reading my angry comment, and he spent all night looking for a shaman to curse me and make me the heroine of this story. The girl grimaced. But on the other hand, it's for the best. It's worth recognizing that there's no silver lining in life. So now I get to meet my favorite character, Grover, and save him from death. So my first step is to escape from the Swan family. In the original work, Olivia Swan was the unwanted daughter of the family. From childhood, she was looked down upon and humiliated. Even the servants cut back on her food and clothing. The feeling of hunger was a familiar one for the girl. Olivia had been wandering around her new home for hours. She needed to familiarize herself with the local environment. Her stomach rumbled in protest, demanding some kind of food. Hey, dumbass, I heard you haven't slept or eaten in days, so I decided to bring you something tasty. The Swan family's daughter, Lucia, shouted loudly. Lucia was the self-proclaimed main woman in the family, the only legitimate daughter. She was arrogant and emphasized her status every chance she got. Olivia endured her constant ridicule. According to the plot of the original story, to survive in this family, Olivia had to pretend to have dementia. When Lucia opened the box of food she'd brought, Olivia saw spoiled cheese in it. Come on, weakling, get on with it, joyfully exclaimed Lucia. Madam, but this cheese is tainted. If the girl eats it, she could be poisoned and die, her maid whispered in Lucia's ear. Olivia took a round-shaped cheese from the box and pretended like she was going to eat it. Huh, look how big and hard that pie is. Olivia laughed merrily and threw the cheese at Lucia. What on earth do you feeble-minded thing do you think you're doing? Lucia shouted. A large lump appeared on her head. Don't cry, eat this delicious pie. Olivia continued to act like a lunatic. She shoved the spoiled cheese into Lucia's mouth. You, that's disgusting, Lucia shouted, spitting out the cheese. Madam, are you poisoned by any chance? We must get you to a doctor as soon as possible. A servant girl ran up to Lucia and exclaimed. At that moment, Olivia was glad that she had finally managed to get revenge on this nasty character. Dumbass, wait at my place. I will tell father everything and he will punish you. Lucia screamed frantically in her maid's arms. Yeah, go ahead and try it. From now on, Olivia Swan will no longer be a whipping girl, mumbled Olivia. As long as she is in this story, she will get her revenge on all those characters that annoyed her so much. The main character's dog, named Anique, ran up to Olivia. She knew that a little later in the story, Lucia would drown him in the river. This dog was extremely important to Olivia. He was her only friend and helper. Your fate will turn out differently this time. I will not allow Lucia to mock you. You and I won't let anyone make fun of us anymore. We'll show them all. Olivia promised the dog. Olivia, are you okay? I just found out you brought Lucia to tears. Lucia's personal maid, Amelie, ran to Olivia. She was the only person in the Swan family who was kind to Olivia. Lucia will surely report to mistress. You will definitely be punished. Even being mentally handicapped won't save you. What am I supposed to do with you now? Amelie asked dejectedly. Olivia laughed out loud. The girl decided to deal with the problems as they arose. For now, she should stick to being shallow. Here comes the punishment, Amelie whispered with a startled shudder. Mrs. Swan approached Olivia, accompanied by her daughter and a large entourage. Olivia, I see you're very brave. You have absolutely no understanding of the difference between the upper and lower class. How dare you raise your hand to the eldest daughter of the head wife? Mrs. Swan asked indignantly. All I wanted to do was feed my little sister, and she suddenly pounced on me, Lucia said in a whiny voice. 
This child is a real degenerate. Beat her so that her skin bursts and her flesh is exposed. She'll end up ruining the Swan family, Mrs. Swan exclaimed irritably. I'm sorry, mistress, but Olivia is nothing but a fool. She didn't hurt Mistress Lucia on purpose. It's not fair to punish her. Punish me instead, screamed Emily, falling to her knees in front of Mistress Swan. How dare you open your mouth, you stupid girl! Mrs. Swan shouted and pushed Emily away from her with her foot. Mistress Swan ordered her guards to capture Olivia and punish her. You have no right to touch her. No matter what you say, that girl is part of the Swan family. She can't be bullied. Emily pulled Olivia tightly against her. She's just an illegitimate girl. She has no rights in this family, Mrs. Swan shouted in an angry voice. The guards roughly grabbed Emily by the arms and hair and pulled her away from Olivia. Bastards, I've put up with too much of your antics, but I won't let you touch Emily. You've constantly held me up as a helpless girl, but you're deeply mistaken about me, shouted Olivia loudly. So you're not an idiot? I knew from the beginning that something was wrong here. It turns out you've been faking it the whole time, Mrs. Swan wondered. Olivia remembered that in the original story, her character had magical powers. She tried to recreate the flames of fire in her palm. Surprisingly, she succeeded. Mom, look at that! She has fire in her hand! Is that really the power of a sacred beast? Screamed Lucia. There are five sacred beasts in this world. The fire phoenix, the golden tiger, the celestial turtle, the water dragon, and the air chylon. Every state wishes to obtain the people in whom these beasts are hidden. Seize her quickly and take her into custody, Mrs. Swan ordered. Although Olivia hadn't quite figured out her character's powers yet, she could still create tongues of flame. The girl created a fireball and directed it towards the guards. A moment later, the guards fell to the ground with a groan. And now it's your turn. Olivia addressed Mrs. Swan and her daughter. Mrs. Swan grabbed her daughter's hand and pulled her toward the palace. They needed to get away from Olivia as soon as possible. Olivia, have you really been faking it all this time? Asked the girl Amelia. That's right, I was doing it so I'd be less bullied. I was just trying to protect myself, Olivia explained. But now the Lord knows you have a sacred beast sealed inside you, and that's not good, mumbled Emily. In the original story, the emperor sought out children all over the country who had the powers of sacred beasts. Those he took away turned into monsters, losing their humanity. To develop the power of the sacred beast, a magic crystal was implanted in the body of each child. Afterwards, the scientists subjected it to various experiments and tested it with spells. Only a select few can complete the challenge. They gain the mighty power of the sacred beast and become a deadly weapon in the hands of the state. In the original story, once the head of the Swan family discovered that Olivia had the powers of a fire phoenix, he immediately sold her to the emperor. In Manhua history, after more than a decade, Olivia underwent cruel and bloody trials and completely subdued the power of the sacred beast. She became the incarnation of the fire phoenix and killed many people. The girl was a powerful weapon in the hands of the state. Because of these events, Olivia has spent her life in agony. At this point, it was likely that the mistress had already reported everything to the Lord, which meant that the guards would be coming for Olivia soon. Emily, I want to escape to the capital. Let's do it together. If I disappear, they won't just let it go. It's dangerous for you to stay here. Warned the girl, Olivia. I agree. I can't let you go alone. With a smile on her face, Emily replied to that one. Quickly gathering their things, Emily and Olivia went outside the manor through the back door. We need to run south, go through the forest, then walk along the river. That's the only way we'll get to the capital. My sister lives there. She'll take care of us for the first while, Amelie told the girl. Are you saying there's a sacred beast hidden in Olivia's body? May our family be enriched by her, Mr. Swan exclaimed happily. Can't you hear me? I'm telling you that just a little more, and she would have burned me and our daughter alive. This illegitimate wench should not be in our family. We need to banish her. Mrs. Swan was outraged. Do you even know what you're saying? You stupid woman!
an enraged Mr. Swan slapped his spouse across the face. Right now, the emperor is looking for children with powers. We need to bring Olivia to court. Then not only will we get a lot of money, but also a more prestigious title. Send the guards after her, and I'll go to the chief of the region. A short time later, Mrs. Swan ran into her husband's office, screaming wildly. It turned out that the Olivia she hated had escaped. Mr. Swan sent all his guards after the fugitive. He ordered her to be found at all costs. Emily saw the lights of many torches deep in the forest. She ordered Olivia to run with all her might. She couldn't let herself be caught. How did they find out so quickly? Olivia thought to herself fearfully as she fled. Emily and Olivia didn't manage to get far as they were blocked by the Swan family's hunting dogs. Mistress Olivia, we finally found you. And you made us sweat. How could you run away? Your father worries about you a lot, said the Swan family's chief henchman as he approached the girl. His name was Zod, and he had a particularly violent temper. You think I don't know anything? That old fart is only worried because he's lost his cash cow. He's willing to sell his own daughter for his own well-being. A man like that is not worthy to be called my father, Olivia exclaimed. Madam, what are you saying? Come home nicely, don't make me be rude, said the girl Zod, kneading his hands. Stay away from us. Mistress and I are not going back to the Swan family, shouted Amelie and held the knife out in front of her. Huh, Amelie, since when did you become so brave? Not only did you kidnap your mistress, but you're threatening me with a knife, Zod said with a laugh. You're just a stupid maid, so why make a heroine of yourself? Zod gripped Amelie's hand tightly. Since Zod had no positive qualities, he hit Amelie in the face with all his might with his fist. The girl lost consciousness. Olivia squealed exhaustedly. Mistress, be sensible and come home with us, said Zod, turning to Olivia. When Amelie came to her senses, she grabbed Zod's leg and yelled at Olivia to run into the woods. Zod pulled out his knife and stabbed Amelie in the back. Don't! Olivia screamed, tears spurting from the girl's eyes. Olivia tried to concentrate all the energy in her body around her. At the same instant, bright flames erupted in the air. I'll finish you off right now, Olivia promised the guards. Olivia didn't notice one of the guards approaching her from behind. He hit the girl on the head with a club. The girl collapsed exhaustedly at Zod's feet. Zod stepped on her hands so that she could no longer create flames in her palms. Look at that. She can start a fire with her bare hands. Is this the power of a sacred beast? This power is truly astonishing. No wonder they pay such a large sum of money for her. A guard with a club exclaimed, Mistress, if you don't want to die here, then come back with us nicely, Zod said, lifting Olivia off the ground by her hair. I will have my revenge on you, be sure of that. You are the ultimate monster. Olivia said and spat in Zod's face. You're nothing but an illegitimate wench. What do you think you are? I'm going to beat you to a pulp right now. Zod grabbed Olivia by the throat and lifted her high off the ground. Suddenly, an arrow hit Zod's arm. With a loud scream, the man released Olivia. Who are you? I'm not going to let this go. You're going to hell right now, shouted Zod into the thicket of the forest. Where is it that a pack of stray dogs dare to bark at the Lord? Quickly let this girl go. A brunette on a white horse rode out of the thicket of the forest. Do I really see him alive? It's Grover, Olivia whispered in surprise. Bastard, you dared to wound me, so expect no mercy. The irritated Zod pulled the arrow out of his hand. Eh, what an arrogant tone, Grover said reproachfully, and got down from his horse. Several guards ran toward Grover with knives drawn. Grover drew his sword from its sheath. A moment later, the fight was over. Grover walked over to Olivia and got down on one knee in front of her. The man held out his hand to her. Mr. Grover, is it really you? Olivia whispered in surprise and put her palm into the man's hand. And how do you know my name? Grover asked the girl. Zod stealthily approached Grover from behind and swung his knife, intending to drive it into the man's body. Careful, Olivia shouted and set Zod's bald head on fire with her flame. This is the power of the sacred beast.
A thought flashed through Grover's mind. Grover jumped up from his seat and kicked Zod in the stomach. The man flew several meters away. Rat, your shamelessness has opened my eyes to your nature. Only rats like you attack from the back. Grover hissed angrily. He drew his sword and put it to Zod's neck. Wait, Mr. Grover, the individual in question killed someone dear to me, so I must take revenge on him myself, Olivia shouted. This girl has a strongly developed sense of duty and justice. She has a cool temperament. She won't be easy to deal with. Isn't that why she's a child who has also chosen to be a sacred beast? Grover thought to himself. Grover remembered that he too had a daughter who had the power of a sacred beast. The memory was painful in the man's heart. Mistress, wait. Isn't Amelie just a common servant? I don't remember you being close to her. So why get so angry? Zod exclaimed fearfully. If Amelie, who gave her life for me, can't be called a close man, how can one who is willing to sell his daughter to the Imperial Palace be considered a father? With pain in her voice, Olivia exclaimed. Grover remembered how his daughter with the power of a sacred beast was forcibly taken to the palace. She had been labeled a state treasure. No one thought of the fact that she was her father's only daughter. Whoever hurts my loved ones is my personal enemy, Olivia shouted and pointed a huge ball of flame at Zod. With a quick burst of flame, Zod scattered only ash on the wind. Olivia fainted. Her strength left her body. Grover picked the girl up in his arms. If his daughter was still alive, she must be the same age as Olivia by now. Grover lifted the girl in his arms and carried Olivia to his horse. He ordered his guard to give Olivia's maid a proper burial. When Olivia opened her eyes, she didn't immediately realize where she was. This room was unfamiliar to her. How long have I been asleep? Shouldn't I be in the woods right now? Olivia thought to herself as she sat up in bed. Olivia noticed that she was not alone in the room. Standing near the window were Younger and Silver. These two characters were also children at this point. They would play an important role later in the original story. It's so great to see the childhood of these characters. Olivia thought to herself, smiling happily. Younger, look at her face. That girl looks a little dorky, said Silver to his brother. Younger assumed that the girl had eaten some outlandish mushrooms. I'm not stupid at all, Olivia exclaimed. If she wanted to survive in this world, she should be friends with these two brothers. I've heard that after a man eats outlandish mushrooms, he grows colorful grebes on his head. Said Younger and Silver immediately decided to test his brother's words. Grover walked into the room and saw the children fighting. Grover decided to have a tea party so the kids could have a quiet time to socialize and make friends. Father, why did you bring that idiot here? Silver asked. Don't call her that. That girl has a name. By the way, you still haven't introduced yourself to us, noted Grover. My name is Olivia, and just recently I ran away from my family, narrated the girl. Why are you here? Do you want to be our sister? I don't need a stupid sister. I already have my own sister, Gabriella. She's the only one I'll always consider my sister. Silver continued to grumble. Olivia knew that the main character in this manhua had a daughter named Gabriella. The girl was given to the palace because she had the power of a sacred beast. While at the palace, she died tragically due to a failed experiment. After Gabriella's death, the emperor rewarded Grover with lands and a large sum of money. But no amount of wealth could dull the pain of losing his beloved daughter. Grover would later blame himself for it for the rest of his life. You make a good point. I came here to be your sister proclaimed Olivia, jumping up from her seat. She knew that the plot of the original story would have Grover agonizing over the death of his daughter. She must save him from that. Mr. Grover, be my father and I will be your daughter, Olivia asked. That girl is very straightforward, Younger remarked to himself. Father, don't take her up on her offer. It sounds like complete stupidity, shouted Silver fearfully. Good. Grover replied and put his hand on his son's head to reassure him. Let's all go somewhere together, suggested Grover to his children. After Gabriella left the palace, father never once took you and me on trips. Younger noted to himself in surprise. Sir, your sons will ride in the first carriage and Mistress Olivia will sit in the second. 
Grover was told by his loyal subordinate and advisor, Mr. Wong. It was also his responsibility to run the house. Olivia looked at the second carriage. It was filthy and had a foul odor. Huh, a scruffy girl like you. This wagon will fit right in, Silver said with a laugh. Mistress Olivia, there are different ranks of guests, and their reception is different, of course. All guests who are not of the highest rank ride in this carriage, Manager Wong explained to the girl. Wong, are you really going to let Olivia ride in such a poor carriage? Haven't you heard? She's going to be my daughter, which means she'll be the main woman of the family in the future. And I think you'll be in a lot of trouble then, Grover warned the steward. Grover's words startled Wong, so he ordered the wagon to be changed as soon as possible. Grover brought Olivia to the spot where he had ordered her maid Amelie to be buried. Plucking a few flowers, Olivia placed them on the girl's grave. Amelie, I'm sorry, I couldn't protect you. If I had been a little stronger, you wouldn't have left me. I'm so useless, I should have used my power even earlier and saved you. Crying bitterly, Olivia said, Amelie, rest in peace. There's no need to torture yourself. You've done all you can. You're only a child, and you shouldn't say that. You don't need to take everything on your shoulders. Grover crouched down next to the girl and gently stroked her head. I only want you to enjoy your childhood. Don't worry about other things. I'll take care of them, said Grover and hugged the girl. Grover was approached by his son, Younger, and handed him a bouquet of flowers. I'm going to go visit Gabriella and you play here, said Grover to his son and walked off over the hill. Every time he went to his daughter's grave, he never let any of his sons walk with him. Hey, you, why did you pretend to cry? Silver asked Olivia. I wasn't pretending, the girl objected. You're just stupid. I know you weren't really crying, Silver said to the girl and began to make various funny faces. Olivia laughed out loud at Silver's foolishness. She had already forgotten how many misfortunes had happened to her in these few days. Silver and Olivia ran and goofed around for a long time more before they tumbled down the hill. Two robbers immediately approached the children. Looking at their clothes, the robbers realized that they were not ordinary children, but children of the nobility. If you want to walk around here, give us money, said one of the brigands. What kind of ignorance is that? Do you even know who you're talking to? I am the second hereditary son of Mr. Grover Chadwick. My name is Silver. Silver exclaimed, and Olivia marveled at the boy's stupidity. Why did he have to tell her about his high lineage? Are you really the prince's son? The robbers asked joyfully. They began quickly going over in their heads the sums that the prince would pay them for the release of his son. One of the brigands tied Silver up and threw the boy on his shoulder. The second bandit approached Olivia and struck her on the head with the hilt of his sword. The girl's eyes went black and she fainted again. The bandits brought the children to the leader of their gang. His name was Lupin. Lupin, we're about to become fabulously rich. We have bound the prince's son. A blonde-haired outlaw named Steve bragged to his leader. Answer me, are you idiots? Why did you capture the prince's son? We can start digging our own graves right now. Is that what I taught you? Lupin asked his subordinates. And though you are right, the prince would give much for the life of his son. Lupin exclaimed joyfully and laughed loudly. Olivia knew the man sitting in front of her. He was Lupin, a nervous and bloodthirsty thief. The girl hadn't expected to meet him so early. In the original story, he appeared much later. My dear friends, you and I now have two choices. Either we get rich or we die. We send the prince the severed finger of his son and demand a certain amount of money. If he refuses us, we will cut off the other one. Lupin went on exclaiming joyfully. No matter who his father is, prince or commoner, he must obediently pay our ransom. The bandits grabbed Silver by the arm and threw him to the ground. Steve drew his knife from its sheath and prepared to cut off the boy's finger. Wait, let's not be hasty. How much money are you going to ask for? Do you even know how much money the prince has? Olivia asked Lupin. She decided to stall for time a bit. The girl hoped that the guards would soon notice the absence of the children and come to their aid. 
I hadn't even thought about it. This is the fattest fish I've ever caught. I want to ask for thousands or no. I'll ask for a million or five million. I think that will be enough, Lupin said thoughtfully. Huh, five million. The prince will die laughing when he hears that amount. His sword alone, adorned with seven gems, is worth seven million, Olivia said through laughter. How do you know about the prince's sword? Who are you anyway? Lupin wondered. A little girl was sitting in front of them, but she was thinking like an adult. This surprised and amused Lupin at the same time. So, are we going to cut the finger or not? Grumbled Steve grudgingly. How do I know about the sword? We're in the same boat. I'm also crazy to get rich. Why don't you go straight to the prince's residence? I know there are many rare jewels there. I want you to be my ally, said Olivia. Ah, you lowlife. I knew you would eventually betray us, Silver roared. I guess a smart little girl like you must have some kind of plan already, am I right? Lupin asked the girl. I plan to use this fool to lure the tiger out of the mountain, Olivia told the gang leader. The bandits decided that the girl was no danger, so they untied her hands. We will take his jasper pendant and throw it into the gorge. The prince will be sure to outfit a squad to rescue his son, and in the meantime, we'll invade his residence. Olivia snatched his jasper pendant from Silver's belt. I even know where the secret entrance to the residence is. Olivia held out the pendant to Lupin. I don't know who you really are, but you're thinking pretty straight. If we do as you say, we shall be rich beyond measure. Lupin exclaimed and clapped his hands joyfully. Lupin left Steve and John to watch the boy, and himself, with the rest of the brigands, went to the prince's residence. Lupin decided to take Olivia with him. The girl promised to show him a shortcut. Grover bowed his heads before his daughter's grave. He was pained that it was he who had brought his daughter to the emperor's palace. Grover felt that he was responsible for his daughter's death. Olivia led the bandits to Gabriella's grave. Grover was sitting next to the grave. Olivia threw a fireball at the brigands and hurried over to Grover. How dare that little infestation betray me! She will pay for this! Lupin hissed angrily and drew his sword. Lupin jumped sharply into the air and caught up with the girl in a flash. Turning around, Olivia noticed the shiny lightning bolts. Grover noticed with the corner of his eye that Olivia was in danger, so he rushed to her aid. Who dares come to this graveyard? Asked Grover, pulling the girl close to him. Baby, where's your daddy now? Go ahead and call him loudly, who knows? Maybe he'll come to your rescue in time. Steve said to the boy and patted him on the head. Hey, you! Is my brother some kind of toy to you? Let him go quickly! Younger, who had appeared on the threshold of the brigand cave, ordered. Oh, look at that. Good luck. Another purse on legs has come to us. The bandits rejoiced and rushed to Younger. Look, there's a 10,000 silver bill on the ground. Which one of you lost it? Younger asked in surprise, pointing to a paper bill lying nearby. The robbers, forgetting about the boys, rushed to the bill. Younger ran to his brother and cut the ropes on his arms. When I lost sight of you, I went in search of you. Fortunately, I quickly found a clue. There were burnt twigs scattered all the way to this spot, Younger told his brother. I figured there was only one person capable of such a thing. I realized pretty quickly that you were in danger, and I was right. I don't believe she's so kind. Olivia also managed to deceive you. She is actually a bad person. She got involved with the brigands and went looking for our father. We need to hurry to save him. Younger exclaimed excitedly. I, on the contrary, think we should stay out of it. I'm sure if the bandits find our father, it will be the end of them. Those bandits will regret messing with him. Younger reassured his brother. You killed all my men in one fell swoop. How is that even possible? Why can't such a large number of people defeat one? Lupin wondered. Stop yelling, now it's your turn to die. Grover answered the gang leader in a calm voice and struck him with his sword. When all the brigands were finished, Grover hid his sword in its scabbard. Mr. Grover, you are excellent, exclaimed Olivia. The girl hadn't expected that she would ever get to see her favorite character fight live with the brigands. It was truly delightful and mesmerizing. 
Are you okay? Those brigands didn't hurt you? Grover asked the girl. I'm fine, but they still have your son Silver in their hands. While we were playing with him, we were captured by those mountain brigands for you to pay the ransom for Silver later. We urgently need to rescue your son. Just as Olivia finished speaking, she heard Silver's joyful voice. Silver, are you okay they didn't have time to hurt you? Olivia asked. Get away from me. Silver roughly pushed Olivia away from him. Grover walked over to his son and hugged him tightly. We were attacked by bandits. They beat me. And it was all Olivia's fault. She's the reason we were captured by the bandits. Nyabed Silver. Grover watched his children's verbal altercation with a smile. As it was getting dark, they had to go home. It was time for dinner. At dinner, Olivia and Silver continued to fight. They blamed each other for what had happened. It hasn't been this noisy here since my sister left us, said Junger to his father. I've made my decision. Olivia stays to live with us. I will give her my last name. From this day forward, she is Olivia Chadwick, Grover announced after a little thought. Olivia was extremely excited by the news. She never expected to become the daughter of her favorite character. Her dream came true. She could now be with Mr. Grover all the time. Olivia dreamed that Grover was killing innocent people over and over again. She jumped up in her bed in horror. She had forgotten why she was in this world. According to the plot of the original story, in 10 years, Grover will become the new emperor, having overthrown his predecessor before that. Once on the throne, he will start killing innocent people while violently conquering new lands. By burning everything in his path, Grover will turn into a tyrant. At one time, after reading the story to the end, Kimberly couldn't accept the ending, so she wrote an angry review to the author of the Manhua. The next day, she found herself in Olivia's body. This is the 19th year of Emperor Augustus's reign. That means Grover will be the next emperor in 10 years. I must prevent the tragic events of the future and prevent Grover from becoming a tyrant. To prevent future events, Olivia needed to get into the emperor's palace. She asked her new father, Mr. Grover, to let her study at the Confucian school at the palace. No, not again. You will not study at the emperor's palace. Grover said in a voice that brooked no objection. He was afraid of losing another daughter. I promise you that no one will know about my power. If I don't go to the palace to learn, I won't be able to save my father. And if I don't stop him, we will all die, Olivia exclaimed. Save me? What are you talking about now? Why is everyone going to die? The prince wondered. Olivia wanted to explain everything to Grover, but all that came out of her mouth was incoherent babble. She definitely ate poisonous mushrooms and became an idiot. I told you she was weird, Silver said in a voice full of joy. Olivia repeated her speech again, but only a mumble came out of her mouth. Father, chase her away, I'm telling you. She's just eaten mushrooms. When they sprout on her head, it'll be too late. She'll infect us with them, too, Silver said to his father and pushed Olivia off the training ground. Olivia realized that some force was preventing her from telling the Manhua story. When she starts to say something about the future, her voice becomes very distorted. And yet you're not meant to be in the courtyard no matter how much you want to, Silver said with a joyful laugh. Olivia didn't have the strength to answer him. Her eyes filled with tears. If she didn't get to the palace, it was unlikely she would be able to save Grover and his family. Hey, don't cry. It's no fun at all to pester you when you cry, Silver admitted to the girl. He turned from side to side, not knowing how to comfort her. To distract the girl from her troubled thoughts, the brothers pulled her to the central square of the town. There was to be another spring festival there today. The children went all around the market square and bought just a huge amount of all kinds of sweets. Younger, do I really have no chance at all of getting to study at the palace? Olivia asked as they sat down on a bench to eat cotton candy. Olivia, don't upset your father. If he loses his daughter again to the power of a sacred beast, he may not be able to bear it, replied Younger to the girl. Just need to not use the power of a sacred beast and let people know about my abilities. I don't think father should compare me to Gabriella, 
I believe I will be safe in the palace. I will be able to protect myself. And I know how else you can protect our father. I know that the power of the sacred beast can be developed through the development of magic techniques. If you can, master the power to the right level. You will definitely save father. With a serious expression on his face, Junger said, For example, you can practice lighting lanterns without burning them. That way, no one will know that you have the power of a sacred beast. You need to learn how to use your power secretly. By the way, my father's friend learned how to control his power on his own. Junger, you're the nicest big brother. Once we get home, I'll go up to my father and prove to him that I can hide my power. By using it secretly, I will be able to protect myself. With a loud shout and noise, a crowd of horsemen flew into the square. Look at these little people scattering like a bunch of frightened mice! The young man leading the group of riders shouted. Silver noticed one of the riders rushing straight at Olivia. Silver hurried to get Olivia out of the way. Are you okay? What were you doing in the middle of the road? Silver asked the girl, rubbing her bruised forehead. You two nasty rats! Do you know you almost killed the heir to the throne? The young man descended from his horse to the ground. Olivia gasped in surprise. Standing in front was the fifth Prince Eugene. Why didn't you let the crown prince's carriage pass? Are you blind, or did you intentionally want to harm me? An angry voice questioned the young man. There are so many people at the party, and you're galloping. Have you no conscience at all? Olivia objected to the prince. You're a stinking slum mouse. You think you can lecture me? Do you want to taste my whip? Quickly kneel before the heir to the throne, the prince said irritably. Eugene, don't you dare hurt my sister. Silver stood in front of the prince, blocking Olivia with his body. Your old sister disappeared somewhere, didn't she? Where did the other one come from? The prince wondered. Dear fifth prince, my brother and sister have been disrespectful to you. Allow me to apologize for their inappropriate behavior. Bowing his head before the prince said younger, Finally, the most reasonable person in this whole company. Do you know that your brother and sister almost knocked me down? The prince asked arrogantly. I am truly sorry for their behavior. I promise to tell my father. He will teach them wisdom. Rest assured they will receive their punishment. Without raising his head, Junger said, Know your place and tell your brother and sister to behave more discreetly. Let them no longer block the future emperor's path. After saying these words, the fifth prince once again mounted his horse and rode away. Brother, why are you being so polite to him? Silver marveled. Don't worry, no one can intimidate my family and just walk away. I'll make that asshole beg for mercy. He'll suffer a humiliation he won't just wash away. Junger promised his brother. My dear brother, you are already up to something, am I right? Without hiding his joy, Silver asked. Junger asked Silver to annoy and argue with the prince while he distracted the guard. Since Prince was completely focused on Silver's childishness, he didn't notice that Olivia had put a laxative in his ice cream. Then the girl smeared the prince's stool with fast-setting glue. When the prince wanted to get up from his stool after a while, he realized that it was stuck to his outer garment. The guard rushed to help the prince, but he was also unable to remove the stool. After a few more minutes, the prince realized he was starting to have stomach problems. Quickly carry me to where there are absolutely no people, ordered the prince to his guards. One of the guards shouldered the prince and carried him to the nearest bushes. Someone in the crowd threw a watermelon rind at the guard's feet. The guard slipped on it and stretched out on the sidewalk tiles. Sir, are you not badly hurt? The guard asked the prince. He did not answer him anything. The prince realized that it was too late to run to any bushes. Watching the whole scene, the two brothers and Olivia laughed loudly, unable to hold back tears of joy. It's late and the kids aren't back yet. Wong, do you think I was too harsh on Olivia this morning? She couldn't have run away from home because of that, could she? Grover asked his manager. Sir, I told you that Mistress Olivia and your sons went to the festival. They must be on their way home by now. Mr. Wong reassured Grover. 
Manager Wong was right, and Olivia entered the courtyard with Younger and Silver, laughing merrily. Grover noted to himself that it had been a long time since he had seen his son so happy. Olivia walked over to Grover and handed him a carnival mask. It was her gift to him. Father, I would like to talk to you. Although I also possess the power of sacred beasts, I'm different from Sister Gabriella. I want to develop the power of the holy beast and learn how to protect myself so that tragedy won't happen again. I learned that you have a friend who developed this power on his own. I won't back down from my decision. I want to study at the palace. Olivia exclaimed eagerly. Good, you managed to talk me into it. We'll pay my friend a visit tomorrow. Grover promised the girl. The prince's friend lived in a remote area. His small house was in the midst of dense thickets. The man was often called a hermit. His real name was Spencer Chargen. Who's that with you? Asked Grover to his friend. The prince told his buddy that it was his daughter and they needed help. And why do you only come to me when you need some help? Spencer asked indignantly. Okay, I'll help you, but only because of your daughter. Spencer relented. He motioned for his guest to go inside. Spencer, please teach my daughter how to use the power of the sacred beast, asked his buddy Grover. And you have the nerve to ask me such a thing. You know that in order to master the power of a sacred beast, you have to use extreme brutal techniques. Spencer resented. I know, but only by mastering the power of the sacred beast can my daughter protect you. On top of that, she knows what awaits her and has absolutely no fear of it, replied his mate Grover. Ten years ago, Spencer was in the service of the emperor. He was the one who experimented on children to enhance their power of the sacred beast. When the seventh child died in his arms, he fled the palace. Spencer promised he would never take on such work again. I remember that you were the one who helped me escape from the emperor back then, and I am grateful to you to this day. I'm willing to give my life for you, but don't ask me to indulge you in the matter of the power of sacred beasts. I won't be able to fulfill your request. But it's not his request, it's mine. I want you to help me control my power. Even if you refuse me today, I will come to you tomorrow. I will settle near your house. Olivia promised Spencer. Listen, that's a great idea. We'll build several houses in this secluded spot and live here as a big family. Grover said loudly and winked conspiratorially at Olivia. It's decided. We'll cut down all these bamboo forests and build houses here. People will flock to this beautiful area in large crowds. Enough! Are you trying to drive me crazy? Grover, you are a man of misfortune. So be it. I'll help you. We'll start training starting tomorrow morning, Spencer said with pain in his voice. Your training will be painful, but know that if it gets too hard for you that you can't stand it, we'll come home right away. Grover promised the girl. Spencer, as promised, began teaching Olivia the next day as soon as the sun rose. The first thing he did was show her the pose that helped her get the life force of heaven and earth. Spencer pulled a red pill out of his pocket and held it out to Olivia. He asked the girl to swallow it. After you swallow this pill, your body will relax completely. You will enter a trance state and I will be able to press the acupuncture points on your body. After that, your body will begin to harden. If you survive this first trial, it will be easier from here on. I want to warn you that many children with the power of a sacred beast have bled and died during this trial. Are you ready to move on? Spencer asked the girl. I told you I'm ready to go all the way, and I won't die. I'm stronger than most, said the girl, and swallowed the red pill. Swallowing the pill, Olivia felt warmth throughout her body at the same moment. She felt renewed and long-awaited calm. When Olivia opened her eyes, she saw a surprised Spencer standing in front of her. The man told her that her body hadn't rejected the power of the sacred beast, which was rare. He noted that her abilities were truly unique. But know this is only the beginning. In the days to come, you will continue to develop your power and prepare for it. The power of a sacred beast isn't just about lighting objects on fire from a distance. 
It's about constantly developing your skills in wielding it. A month later, Olivia could light a fire inside the lanterns without burning them. Spencer had helped the girl master her power, for which she was extremely grateful. Thanking his friend for his help, Grover took Olivia back to his residence. Father, now that I know how to hide the power of the holy beast, can I visit the palace? Olivia asked Grover. This time the man answered in agreement. Well, sixth prince, let's play a game. Look at the clappers I bought at the festival, Eugene exclaimed, lighting the wick of one of the clappers. Eugene threw a lighted clapper at his brother Tristan. It exploded near the boy's ear. Huh, don't hide, let's play, it's fun, Eugene said with a joyful laugh. Suddenly, a small tongue of flame appeared on Eugene's head. The flames were getting stronger by the second. The guards rushed to the aid of the fifth prince. Sixth Prince Tristan laughed softly. Are you making fun of me? Don't you dare do that to me. The fifth prince was angry. Eugene ordered his guards to capture his brother. Every time the fifth prince was in a bad mood, he took his anger out on his younger brother. Grover arrived at the palace with Olivia and his sons. The emperor's palace is very beautiful, but how much misery is there? Olivia thought to herself sadly. We are invited to attend the annual celebration with you. Members of the royal house come to the courtyard today to congratulate the emperor and empress dowager, explained Grover to his children. Olivia remembered that in the original story, it was at this feast that the sixth prince had been poisoned. He had been secretly poisoned by the fifth prince's mother, Tamala, a concubine, although Tristan did not die from the poisoning. But the toxin was constantly in his body and tormented him, making him a different person. This poisoning was the starting point of Grover becoming a tyrant. I can't have Tristan being poisoned, Olivia decided to herself. Grover asked his dreams to keep an eye on Olivia. There were many people in the palace, so Grover was afraid the girl would get lost. Turning around, Grover noticed that the girl had disappeared. Father, don't worry about Olivia, I'll find her now, Younger promised. Silver hurried to follow his brother. Olivia came to the inner courtyard of the Imperial Palace, this is where the sixth prince was poisoned in the original story. As Olivia climbed the tree, she saw the sixth prince being served sweet soup. In the original story, it was the one with the poison in it. Now it's time to harness the power of the sacred beast, Olivia thought to herself and began to draw magic circles in the air. Olivia used her power to heat the plate the maid was serving to the prince. She shrieked loudly and dropped the soup to the floor. You dirty wench! Have you had enough of living? shouted the concubine Tamila. The maid fell on her knees before her and begged for forgiveness. Concubine Tamila, today is such a great feast and you are fretting over some bowl of soup. There's nothing wrong. Order another plate to be brought. The Empress Dowager said in a calm voice. As the sixth prince walked back to his room, he thought about the fact that he had seen a girl in the tree today. I wondered if it was a trick of the eye, or if she was really sitting there. Sixth brother, you didn't get sweet soup, so out of my heartfelt kindness, I brought you a bowl of soup. I also added a ball of black sugar to it. It will only enhance the flavor, said Eugene, cutting across his brother's path. Eugene, this is too much. Stop messing with me, Tristan shouted irritably. Why are you standing there like that? Quickly grab him. He has to eat that damn soup today, shouted Eugene. Tristan ran away. His brother's guards rushed after him. Quickly grab him! Don't give him a chance to escape into a crowded place! Shouted Eugene to his guards. Now I'm definitely lost. I wonder what this place is. Where am I supposed to go now? Olivia thought to herself as she looked around. Suddenly the sixth prince swooped down on the girl. Look at that, it's younger sister. Great job, I'm glad you helped me. Eugene exclaimed happily. A guard of the fifth prince walked up to Tristan and grabbed his arms. Where do you keep running away from me? You still haven't tasted the sweet soup. It would be a pity if it went to waste. Eugene walked over to his brother and tried to force the soup into his mouth. Tristan pulled away and shook his head from side to side. How I love sweet soup. Can I try it? Olivia asked, grabbing the fifth prince's hand. Don't touch that. Get out of here. Stay out of here. Why are you always getting in my way? Eugene exclaimed and pulled his hand out of the girl's clinging grip. Well, don't be greedy. 
I want a taste of that soup, too. I haven't eaten much since this morning, so I'm hungry, Olivia exclaimed and reached for the soup again. Eugene tried to push the girl away from him again, but he suddenly fell and knocked over a bowl of soup on top of himself. The guards ran up to the fifth prince and helped him up. Run away from here now, Olivia ordered Tristan. Back in the square, Olivia saw her irritated father. She apologized to him for stepping away for a while. She also told him that she had to use the power of the sacred beast. But luckily, no one had noticed. Okay, I forgive you. I'm glad nothing happened to you. From now on, try not to get too far away from me, said Glover to his daughter. Olivia was surprised that he took her apology so calmly. She had expected her father to scold her. Know that we didn't come to the palace today just because of the feast. There was another reason. I've settled some formalities. In three days, the typhoon school begins, said Grover to Olivia and held out the documents rolled up in a tube. Yay, I'm so excited to be going to school at the palace, Olivia exclaimed happily. Tamila's concubine had been abusing her maid for hours and calling her names. The woman was annoyed because a well-thought-out plan had fallen apart. Concubine Tamila, even if you break this girl's arm, it still won't help, said the eunuch Levin who entered the room. And what do you want? Are you asking me to spare her? Tamila asked irritably. If the case of the poisoning of the sixth prince comes to light, it will be bad for everyone. Let your slave handle it. Mistress, better take care of her body and don't get her shoes dirty, Lebanon said with a sidelong glance. Mistress, please don't kill me. I promise I won't tell anyone anything, the maid pleaded. Tamila pushed the girl away from her irritably. The guards who entered the room grabbed the maid, tied her up, and dragged her to the dungeon. The sixth prince must be removed as soon as possible and don't make any more mistakes said the concubine to the eunuch Levin. Three days later, classes began at the typhoon school. Looking around, Olivia still hadn't spotted the sixth prince. Although today was the first day of school, Tristan hadn't shown up for class. The whole thing seemed highly suspicious. Olivia remembered that in the original work, Tristan was locked in his room and no one cared about him. No one cared if he was studying or not. Without saying a word to anyone, Olivia rose from her seat and walked out of the classroom. Have you seen what that wench is up to? They say she's Prince Chadwick's adopted daughter. This girl is just a simple girl without a mother, but it's obvious she's extremely ill-mannered. The classmates whispered among themselves. What did you just call my sister? Silver asked irritably. Olivia went to the headmaster and asked him why the sixth prince didn't show up for class today. You see... Our school requires proper paperwork and procedures for admission. No one has done that for the sixth prince, answered the girl by the headmaster. In fact, he was paid a small sum of money to turn a blind eye to the fact that the prince was absent from classes. Please send a letter requesting that you send someone to deal with Tristan's admission to your school. He's a prince and no one cares that he doesn't go to school. This is your oversight and negligence said Olivia to the principal. Heh, at such a young age, says what loud words. But is it your duty to worry about such things? You're just the prince's adopted daughter, a country girl. You're very lucky to get into our school. With a snicker, the headmaster replied to the girl. Do you still want to reproach me for something? I am Mr. Grover Chadwick's daughter, and they are country wenches, Olivia exclaimed. Principal Lisbon, what do you think you're doing? How can you call my daughter a country girl? An enraged prince stormed into the principal's office. Daddy, I'm so glad you came here, Olivia cheered. Your first day of school. I was worried, so I thought I'd pay you a visit, her father said to the girl and gently stroked her head. I did not at all expect to see a man here who does not value his life. Turning back to Principal Lisbon, the prince hissed. Now that I have adopted Olivia, regardless of her former origins, she is a princess and a royal relative. You can't talk to her like that. Do you know what the punishment is for contempt of the royal family? Asked the prince to the headmaster. I want to assure you that your daughter will be treated with the respect she deserves at our school. I will never make a mistake like this again. 
Headmaster Typhoon knew that contempt for the royal family was punishable by death. Father, the headmaster refuses to take the initiative to admit the sixth prince to this school. I also find it disrespectful to the royal family, Olivia exclaimed. There's been some misunderstanding. I'll personally go to the sixth prince myself to settle matters regarding his admission to study. The headmaster muttered fearfully as he flipped through his notes. Don't bother yourself. I will personally bring the sixth prince to class, said Olivia to the principal. Take my pass and be careful. Grover handed his daughter a pass with the princely seal. At the palace, Olivia met Eamon and his retinue. He was the godson of the great eunuch of Lebanon. He did all the dirty work Lebanon dumped on him and bullied Tristan in the palace. If Amin is here, he's probably also looking for Tristan, Olivia thought to herself. It's so noisy outside, which isn't surprising since it's the first day of school. However, that doesn't apply to me. I wonder who the girl who saved me last time is. It would be nice to see her again. Tristan thought to himself and sighed heavily. Sixth Prince, it's good to have you here. I was just looking for you, said Amin, the eunuch who had come up to Tristan. Today is the Empress Dowager's birthday. Therefore, peach buns have been prepared for the occasion. Madam ordered us to distribute them to the princes. The maid handed Tristan a box of delicious hot buns. I may be hungry, but I'm not an idiot. You starve me, and now you want to bring me these buns? Stop bullshitting me. I refuse to eat them, shouted Tristan loudly. Ah, sixth prince. I'm afraid it's not for you to decide. It's a gift from the empress dowager. Even the emperor should accept it, let alone you, prince. Amin said to Tristan in a soft voice. I won't eat them and you won't make me do it, replied Tristan. A guard came up behind him and grabbed him tightly. Tristan screamed loudly, but no one came to help him. I'm not interested in whether you want them or not, whether you like peach buns or not, but you are obliged to eat them. It's an order from the Empress Dowager. I'm only enforcing it, said Amin, taking one of the buns. So, Six Prince, it would be best if you opened your own mouth. Tristan jerked sharply and knocked the bun out of Amun's hands. Amin swung around and gave Tristan a resounding slap. Slave, how dare you hit me, Tristan exclaimed, wiping the blood from his shattered lip. My slap is a slap on behalf of the Empress Dowager. It is disrespectful and a crime to dare to desecrate what Madam has given. I saw your disrespectful attitude, so I could not stand idly by answered the boy, Amun. Make him kneel, ordered Amin to his guards. The guards grabbed the prince and brought him to his knees in front of Amun. Sixth prince, you are obliged to eat this bun for the health of the empress dowager, said Amin, lifting the earth bun. You still think you're related to the royal family, but in reality, you're just a street mouse. When you are here, you are obligated to obey me. Even if you die today, no one will care. So listen to me, and open your mouth. Suddenly, the peach bun in Amun's hands became hot and exploded into small pieces. The hot jam got right in Amun's face. How could a bun explode in someone's hands? Is it really that girl from the tree again? Tristan thought to himself in surprise. Turning around, Tristan spotted the strange girl in one of the trees. Olivia gestured for him to be quiet. The guards hurriedly took Amun to the healer. Tree girl, how glad I am to see you again, Tristan exclaimed. Don't call me wood girl. My name is Olivia. I am the daughter of Prince Chadwick. Since Grover was the younger brother of the current emperor, Olivia was Tristan's cousin. You're my cousin, Tristan cheered. Olivia, did you just blow up that bun? Tristan asked the girl. And you are observant. I use the power of the sacred beast. Olivia admitted and created a small flame in the air. And that sweet soup number, did you pull that off too? Tristan asked. I knew the soup was poisoned, so I heated the plate for the maid to drop it. But it's a secret. We can't let anyone in the palace know about my powers. We'll keep it a secret with you, said Olivia, and winked at her newfound brother. Suddenly Tristan's stomach rumbled. The boy admitted that he often had this. Olivia held out her school lunch to Tristan. In the original story, Tristan lived in terrible conditions without food or clothing. 
so it is not surprising that the boy's stomach often rumbles. Olivia appeared on the threshold of the classroom. The girl announced that she had not come by herself. She had brought a new student, the sixth prince. And who let him come here? He's just a bug rotting away in his own world. What right does he have to come to school? The fifth prince exclaimed indignantly. Don't forget, your mother committed suicide in fear of her sin. You're the one responsible for her death. You don't belong in this school. The other classmates exclaimed. Olivia was amazed at how cruel the kids in her class were. From the original work, the girl remembered that Tristan's mother was a concubine, but she was framed by Tamila and banished from the palace. In the end, Tristan's mother had been forced to commit suicide. Why doesn't the sixth prince have the right to go to school? He has the same rights as you. Olivia decided to stand up for Tristan. The girl decided to take care of him. After all, if he keeps his sanity, her father will not become a tyrant and end up being killed by Tristan. After school, Tristan was afraid to go home. He asked Olivia to stay with him. I changed the poisoning arch at the feast, so the peach scone was the only poisoning option. I think Tristan is afraid to go home for a reason. His relatives are bound to try to kill him again. Olivia thought to herself, Father, can I at least stay Tristan for a while? I don't want you to stay with Tristan in the Imperial Palace. I don't like that idea, said Grover to the girl. Father, we can stay with them. We'll make sure nothing happens to Olivia and Tristan, the brothers promised. Under the onslaught of his children, Grover surrendered after all. Olivia tells her brothers that Tristana wants to poison the fifth prince's mother. I really want to protect Tristan, but I can't sleep in this palace all the time. I can't be with him all the time. We need to come up with some sort of long-term solution to this problem, preferably find a patron for Tristan, then we won't have to worry about him, Younger said thoughtfully. The most important figure in the harem is the Empress Dowager. If she supports Tristan, the concubine Tamila can do nothing. It is decided. We will ask the Empress Dowager to be your patron, said Olivia to Tristan. In the original story, the Empress Dowager was a kind and gentle person. She often came to the aid of the underprivileged. These little children have ruined my incomparable face. I won't let them die quickly. I will torture them to their last breath, promised the enraged Amun. He had heard a rumor that the fifth prince had received a visit from his friends. Amun ordered the guards to search for the children. The guards noticed small blue lights in the bushes. Pulling apart the bushes, Amin and his guards saw a frightening sight. The blood-stained fifth prince was coming straight at them. He was howling wildly, and blue lights danced merrily around him. The frightened guards ran away. What is it? Amin whispered, his whole body trembling in terror. Save me! Tristan howled and crawled toward Amin. Get away from me. I forbid you to come near me. Amin shouted fearfully. Don't kill me. I'll become a law-abiding citizen. I won't hurt anyone else. Amin shouted, running as far away from the frightening bushes as possible. We've solved the problem with Amin. Now we must somehow communicate with the Empress Dowager. How do we do that? She rarely appears in public. I'm thinking of talking to her at the temple she visits every month on the fifth of the month, said Younger. And tomorrow is just the fifth of the month, Silver exclaimed. Then we will ask the Empress Dowager to be Tristan's patron tomorrow, said Olivia. I don't think you'll have any trouble winning the Empress Dowager's favor. You just have to look as destitute and miserable as possible, said Junger to Tristan. It is advisable to make the concubine Tamila get angry again and start hurting Tristan. The Empress Dowager must see this. You can't even handle a small child! What use are you to me anyway? Tamila shouted angrily at Amun. Go to the eastern residence. You are of no use in the main palace. Tamila pushed Amin away from her with her foot contemptuously. Uncle, please spare me. You have to believe me. There really were demons there, and blue lights were flying around. Those monsters had blood dripping all over their faces, exclaimed Amin, grabbing his uncle Laban by the leg. Are you really so insignificant that you can't even tell the difference between red mascara and blood? You've been tricked. No demons exist in our world, 
said Lebanon to his godson. Miss Tamila, please calm down. It's all because of this underdog. But I think the lights floating in the air are the result of someone's spiritual power. The sixth prince couldn't have done all this on his own. He's obviously being helped by someone. Lewin said with his head bowed. The sixth prince doesn't possess any spiritual power. This I know for sure. I've been observing him since he was a child. Most likely someone who can create fire out of thin air has appeared in his entourage. The woman answered him. That's not what I actually meant. You can just tell the emperor that some kind of power is following you and you think it's coming from the sixth prince. The emperor will definitely take him into custody to see if he has the power of a sacred beast. Lebanon, you always come up with ingenious solutions to problems. Tamila marveled. The woman knew that if the sixth prince fell into the emperor's dungeon, he would be unlikely to survive. Tamila ordered the troops to gather and bring the sixth prince to her. While everyone slept, Junger was on guard duty. The young man sat at the table, watching the candle flame. After a while, he heard a noise on the doorstep. A man announced loudly that the building was surrounded. Wake up! shouted Junger loudly to his sleeping relatives. Bro, don't make any noise. It's still early. Besides, I don't want to go to school today. Silver muttered and rolled over to the other side. Entering the room, Lebanon froze on the spot in surprise. In addition to the sixth prince, there were the prince's children in the building. Lewin looked at the frightened girl. It was most likely the prince's adopted daughter, about whom there had been many rumors recently. Mr. Levan, what do you want in this wing at this late hour and even with nights? Junger asked the eunuch. Oh, we only heard about the demons dwelling in this wing. We thought that someone here might have used the power of the holy beast. We brought Mr. Chowdy from the magical arts department to look into it, explained Laban. There were no ghosts. They set it all up and scared the hell out of me. I told you I'd get my revenge someday, shrieked Amin. You have not been given your word. Mr. Chowdy has yet to find out if these children have the power of the sacred beast or not. Angrily hissed at his nephew Lebanon. That fool Amin could confuse all his cards. Sixth prince children, well, which one of you will be first? Asked Chowdy. And let's go by seniority, starting with the youngest, Lebanon said and jabbed his finger at Olivia. Chowdy created a magic circle in the air to test Olivia's powers, but Tristan covered the girl with his body. He declared that he was the one with the power of the sacred beast. Lebanon asked the magic arts representative not to take the kid's word for it, but to keep checking. Chowdy placed his hand on the sixth prince's head and loudly announced that he possessed the power of a phoenix. That's impossible, I had Olivia. The girl realized that these two adults were up to something. It's clear they're just looking for an excuse to frame the prince. How nasty is that? Younger thought to himself. Congratulations to you, sixth prince. All children who possess the powers of the sacred beast have a duty to benefit the state in the name of the emperor. It is your duty. Well, come with me to the magical arts department. You're not allowed to be involved in conflict now. You are not allowed to be treated inappropriately by anyone, said Lebanon and held out his hand to the boy. Well, sis, see you soon, turning to Olivia, Tristan said. Olivia wanted to protect Tristan with her power, but Younger prevented her. Are you out of your mind? Are you going to use your power right here? The magic arts master hasn't left the palace yet, so you won't be able to hide your power. Are you trying to ruin us all? Younger was indignant when they were alone with Olivia. Forgive me, but I can't just watch Tristan being taken away. If magic spells are used on him, he won't survive, because he doesn't have that kind of power. Sobbing bitterly, Olivia said, You can't do that, you know. I'll confess and then go with them instead of Tristan. Have you thought about our father's feelings? What would happen to him if you were captured? Besides, they won't let Tristan go because they originally planned to kill him. You'll just become another victim. Younger explained to the girl. But what do we do now? Asked Olivia, grabbing her brother by his outerwear. I don't know. Lowering his eyes, Younger replied. 
We can only hope for our father. Early in the morning, we will go straight to him. Madam, the sixth prince is already being taken to the magical arts department. He was not found to have powers, but a spell will be used on him tomorrow, so he can't escape death, reported Laban to Tamila. So far, everything is going according to our plan, but I have some concerns. When we came for the sixth prince, Prince Chadwick's three children were in the same room with him, and since the sixth prince wasn't found to have powers, that means one of the three children has them. The prince's sons have already been checked. No powers were found. So the girl the prince recently adopted probably has it. That girl's name is Olivia. I suggest we get rid of her before something unexpected happens. Another daughter of a prince who has powers? How interesting, Tamila muttered thoughtfully. Don't touch that girl yet. If we grab her, it will disturb the prince. The main thing now is to get rid of the sixth prince. We don't need any more trouble. The prince has already lost one daughter, and if we touch this girl, we will anger him. And when he does, he will definitely interfere with our plans. Take care of the sixth prince as the sun rises and see to it that everything goes properly in the magical arts department. Early in the morning, the prince personally came to the courtyard to check on his children. Father, what are you doing here? We were just on our way to see you. Grover's sons exclaimed loudly. I was uneasy, though, so I decided to pick you up in person as soon as the palace was opened to the public. Grover confessed to his children. Father, Tristan is in trouble. Please help him, Olivia asked Grover. Tristan has been captured and taken to the magical arts department. Spells will be used on him. The Lebanon eunuch took him away, lying that the prince had the power of a sacred beast. Tristan is most likely being bullied now. I would love to help the sixth prince, but I don't want to get involved in a conflict involving the forces of the sacred beasts again, and I especially don't want to put my children in danger. Grover confessed to the girl. But Tristan sacrificed himself for me, didn't he? If he hadn't, they would have captured me. Olivia exclaimed with eyes full of tears. No, it's too dangerous. Forget about him and let's go home. Grover was adamant. Father, the sixth prince is very brave. If it wasn't for him, everyone would know about our sister's strength. Silver shouted loudly and hugged his father tightly. Your father is not the kind of man who forgets to say thank you and leaves a man for dead. I will save the sixth prince. Grover eventually surrendered under the onslaught of his children. Tristan sat in the dungeon of the magical arts department, awaiting his fate. The boy had had enough of Olivia and still managed to save him. Chowdy walked into Tristan's room. Sixth prince, are you awake yet? We must go. Follow me to the spell room. Addressed Chowdy to Tristan. I'm not going anywhere with you now, as I'm very hungry. Feed me first, the sixth prince demanded. He had to bide his time until Olivia arrived. Huh. You think since you're the sixth prince, you can be important? That's just ridiculous. Do you think anyone here cares about your status? Laughing loudly, Chitty asked, Beat me to death, but I'm not going anywhere with you without food, the sixth prince exclaimed. Milkman, don't get cocky. There's nothing stopping me from finishing you off right here. I think that's what I'm going to do. Then all I'll have to do is pretend you've had spells cast on you. Chowdy hissed angrily and grabbed the sixth prince by the throat. Twisting around, Tristan bit Chowdy's hand. Screaming in pain, Chowdy pushed the boy away from him. Hearing the noise, guards rushed into the room. Taking advantage of the commotion that had started in the room, Tristan ran out into the hallway. Spencer sat on the veranda of his house and enjoyed the morning silence. Suddenly, the silence was broken by the clatter of hooves and Olivia's loud voice. Spencer, we need to act, and very quickly, Grover exclaimed excitedly. When are you going to learn some manners? Riding in here on your old mare, you trampled all over my flower field. Spencer shouted angrily. A thousand apologies. I'll pay you for the ruined flowers. This is an emergency. I really need your help, said Grover, bowing to his buddy. Grover told Spencer that the sixth prince had been slandered. The people in the magic department thought he had the power of a sacred beast and took him away. 
What does that have to do with me? The hermit asked irritably. You are a very famous master of the holy arts. There is no one who doesn't know you. Follow me to the sacred magic department and conduct an evaluation of Mr. Tristan's abilities. Grover exclaimed and grabbed his friend firmly by the shoulders. I've already gone against the department once. How can I go there again? No way, better death. Spencer pushed his friend's hands away from him. Besides, the Department of Sacred Magic is the last place I'd want to go back to. A lot of terrible things happened there. Tristan is about to be arrested and begin the spell. If we don't hurry, it will be too late, Olivia exclaimed. I'm just a hermit with knowledge of the power of sacred beasts. How can I help you? Everyone has their own fate. I sympathize with the Sixth Prince, but I'm completely powerless in this situation, replied Spencer to the girl. He got up from his seat and headed into the house. Don't feel bad. I know how to talk him down, Grover said to Olivia and stroked her head soothingly. Grover punched his buddy in the neck. He fell unconscious to the floor. I told you I know how to encourage him to come with us, said Grover to his daughter and loaded his buddy onto his horse. The guards chasing Tristan still managed to corner him. Don't force us to use force, your royal highness, the sixth prince. Just follow us. We will not harm you, said the guards to the sixth prince. Look, there's my father, Tristan shouted, pointing his finger in the distance. The guards flinched and quickly fell to their knees. Tristan took advantage of the moment and ran on. What idiots you are after all, Tristan shouted happily but the boy still did not escape far. He fell into the hands of the eunuch of Lebanon. Tristan was tied up and brought to the magic arts department. Chief eunuch Levin was approached by his godson and reported that they were having some difficulties. Recently, Prince Chadwick broke into the courtyard of the magical arts department. No matter what he's up to or what method he resorts to, we will apprehend him. We need to get rid of the prince as soon as possible. Dead, the prince can no longer be saved replied Laban to his godson. We need not fear anything, for we are patronized by the empress herself. Go and stop the prince. It is with the utmost respect that I greet you, Prince Chadwick. My name is Eamon. I am the head of the guard force, responsible for the secrets of the palace. May I ask what purpose you have come to see us for? Bowing to Grover, Amon said, I don't have time to argue with you right now. Step aside and let me pass. Grover pushed Amon away from him. I'm afraid I can't let you through. This is the Department of Sacred Magic. It is the most important place in the entire palace. Magical techniques are created and implemented here, and no one is allowed to enter here. Amin said in a firm voice, I'm telling you for the last time, let me through or you'll be in trouble, Amina Grover warned. And I'll answer again. It's not supposed to. The sacred magic department is a secret department and reports directly to the emperor. Even you can't just walk in there, said Amin, savoring his power. And I intend to pass anyway. What are you going to do to me? inquired Amin Grover. The guards surrounding Grover bared their swords. I am only doing my duty. I have been assigned by the emperor himself to guard the inner hall. If anyone wishes to pass through... I will be forced to take action. If a fight breaks out, the sword will strike anyone, answered Grover Amon. It's hard for me to predict how this will end for you. By the way, by chance, both children and horses could be hurt. Amon leaned over Olivia and looked closely into her eyes. Get away from my daughter, Grover roared. He grabbed Amon by the face and pushed him aside. Olivia, hide behind me and close your eyes. Don't open them until I tell you to, Grover asked his daughter. Okay, Daddy, Olivia exclaimed, and obediently covered her face with her hands. I don't want my daughter to see what I'm about to do to you, Grover said in an ominous voice and crunched his knuckles.